What's going on my Creation RNs? So I want to come with you with a little bit more story time today because um, this recently happened to a nurse in our ER and I feel like it's only important that we kind of have a discussion about this so that we can hopefully eliminate a lot of this from happening. So I'm going to talk about my own personal experience and that is having a needle stick or blood borne exposure. <laughs> So in the ER, or anywhere for that matter, you as a nurse are very susceptible to these incidents from happening. What I mean is, is either sticking yourself with a needle after trying to inject a patient starting an IV, or by chance having something rupture, say an abscess and it gets in your eye, or say you get blood in your eye. Those are big, big, big deals in the ER where I'm from. So what do you do? Don't panic. <laughs> That's number one. You don't want to panic when these things happen because it only makes it worse. Um, if you by chance get a needle stick, what they recommend is that you not try to bleed the site. That's meaning like if you have a needle stick here, you're trying to do this to get the blood out. That actually makes it worse. Um, studies have shown that it actually gets into your bloodstream quicker that way. So what they recommend is to just use some soap and some water and wash your hands really good. That's all I can suggest for you. If you do by chance get blood into your eyes, which I have gotten blood into my eyes, you want to um, wash it out of your eyes. So how do you do that? There's different ways you can do that. You can either, there's either the sinks that got the little things on them that squirt water out and you can just hold your face there. Sometimes some places don't have that. I have experienced where they did not have that at my last blood exposure. So we use something called Morgan lenses. Morgan lenses are these little films that actually sit over the entire top of your eye and they're attached to saline bags and they just continuously keep flushing out your eye over a period of time. I always highly recommend that because even though you might, you know, splash your face with water, etc. The Morgan lenses ultimately are going to clean the entire eye. That's what they clean the eyes with whenever somebody has some kind of chemical exposure in their eyes. Um, story time. Let's talk about what happened to me. So, I was taking care of a patient who became um, a little agitated. I had just started her IV. I had turned around to grab my transparent tape to place it over it. She got angry because I had looked away and she ripped out her IV. Well, as she was ripping it out like this, the blood went across my face and got in my eyes. And I did not panic. I uh, called for help immediately. I had fantastic coworkers that came in and helped me um, stabilize the patient, make sure the patient's okay, as well as take me to a sink so that I could rinse out my eyes. However, again, whether you're using the little saline syringes or the sink, I don't believe that it is enough to fully get out the exposure from your eyes. So I always recommend the Morgan lenses. Now, what happened to me thereafter? What do you do? What happens when you have a needle or a blood exposure? So what you do is you fill out a report. Every facility is different. However, there's always a risk management report of some kind that you need to fill out stating exactly what happened, what your name is, where you were working, what room it happened in, what was the patient's name, was there anybody else involved. Um, it's kind of an overview of specifically what happened. It is a CYA for the hospitals in case you by chance contract a disease. And when I say disease, what is that? The big things that they normally look for is hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and HIV. So after you fill a report, there's usually kind of an, what they name an exposure nurse. This particular nurse comes to where you are or you have to go where they were. In my case, I had to go where they were. That was quite a walk when you can barely see because I wear glasses. When I work, I wear contacts. I took both my contacts out and I could barely walk through the hallways. But anyways, I had to go where this nurse was at. What they do is they take a sample of the blood from the patient and they take a sample of blood from you. The sample of the blood from the patient is tested for HIV. 
very rarely have I seen them test for hepatitis B and hepatitis C while you were waiting there for them. However, they test the patient to make sure that they don't have any of those diseases. If by chance they do, normally what happens is they will place you on a prophylactic medication regimen. And I have to tell you that this regimen sucks. I have never personally been through it. I have been very lucky with all of my exposures that the people that I have treated have never had any of these diseases. However, the people that have been exposed that did have the disease, it makes you sick to your stomach, it makes you vomit. I They've had a call out of work because they just can't get up out of bed. It's I wish that they had a better medica um, ed medication regimen for particular instances to happen this way. Now, if they do test negative, what they also do, and again, it's another hospital CYA, is they test your blood to make sure that you don't have any of those diseases because they don't want you to come back and say, oh, well, you know, I got hepatitis C because I was exposed and then you ended up having it before to begin with. So that's kind of like a cover their butt type of deal with the hospital. But if you test negative, they test negative, what they do is they make you come back over a period of time. So again, follow your hospital policy and procedures, but I came back uh, three separate times. I had my initial time, I had my three months, I'm sorry, I had my initial time, my two weeks, my three months, and my six months. Because usually HIV, depending on the time of exposure, can take some time to develop in a person's system. So if you are in a situation where you both test a negative, but say a patient has recently, recently had unprotected sex or have used IV needles, any way that they could have possibly been exposed to any of those diseases, it can take time to incubate and develop in their system. Now, I wanna kind of talk about the psychosocial aspect of having a blood exposure because it is one of the worst feelings in your entire life. I can't even think of anything that is comparative to it because it's absolutely horrible. And the first time I was ever exposed, I was a graduate nurse and I did not know what to do. I was scared out of my mind. I cried. I, I mean, I didn't sleep. It was absolutely horrible because you don't know what people have. You treat people every day and it becomes very scary. It's absolutely scary because you just don't know. And in a world that is very violent with patients getting angry at healthcare providers, it's, it's just a very scary world. And I want you to kind of sit back and reflect on, you know, your needle stick exposure because it is, it is not the end of the world if you are exposed and if you by chance contract something because there are a lot of treatments and I just want, I guess I just kind of want to say is you are not alone. If you have not been ever exposed to anything in your entire career, then I say fantastic job. However, if you're like me and you have been exposed, there are many, many, many people that have been exposed to something. If you need to talk about it or have a discussion about it, you can always feel free to message me on any of my social medias. I love to hear from you all about these things and your experiences because again, we're not alone. This happens to a lot of us. But again, this is kind of my end of the discussion. I just want people to, or I should say new nurses, to kind of understand what to look out for and what to do when this situation happens. Don't just leave the hospital. Don't, if somebody tells you don't fill out a report, it's not necessary, you fill out the report. But anyways, I hope y'all are having a wonderful day. Make sure you follow us on our social, make sure you follow me on my social media at Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, as well as my website at creationrn.com. And I look forward to speaking with you again soon. Bye-bye.